Thank you, Kevin. Praise God. Powerful. Powerful, powerful. Hallelujah. God is so good. All the time. Thank you, Lord. We praise you for your presence. Oh, we thank you for your spirit. We thank you for your hand upon each and every one here and online there's no time or distance with you that we are walking in the kingdom of God now because that's where we live we're citizens of the kingdom of your kingdom and we say come thy kingdom be done thy perfect will on earth as it is in heaven in our lives in our loved ones lives country have your way holy spirit rest upon each one of us that everywhere we go everywhere we go there's influence everywhere we go there's a change in the atmosphere because of your presence in us and on us and we thank you for that we bring light into darkness. Thank you, Lord, that you've given us the privilege to call you our Abba Father and to be your children, whom you love as much as you love Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Am I bumping stuff? Okay. Huh? Move this. I don't really need it. I just put tissue on. That's fine. <laughs> I can't see who's on there. Oh, hi, Robin. Hi, Tracy. Hi, Robin. Teresa. Hello, guys. <laughs> Good to have you online. I know Melissa's here. We are doing Word Wars the other day, and... Um, and there's four people online uh, on our Zoom that I never saw. <laughs> I saw Christy, but then there was Marcel. I did see her once. And Melissa was there the whole time, and Marianne came on. I did, we didn't have the computer, so I thought I didn't say hi to them. <laughs> anyway, it's funny. So you were there, Melissa? I was there, Mom. <sighs> Praise God. God is so good. Is God so good? All the time. Isn't he great? All great. the time. Oh, and he has so much for us, in store for us, and he has such overcoming power that's inside of us. And you know what? We were talking today when we were walking, how we can never minimize or take for granted the power of the Holy Spirit that's in us. And the power that raised Jesus' dead body from the grave that's in us. And when Jesus said, all authority has been given unto me. And when he said that, that means the devil has no authority. Right. And then he told us to go. First wait in New Jerusalem. Go there first. Get the power of the Spirit. Go into all the world. Heal the sick, raise the dead. Amen. He told us to go. He gave us the power. And he said, all authority has given unto, been given unto him. And he, put, he gave it to us in his name to take his authority in the name of Jesus and by his blood. So very, very powerful. Um, 
Wow, I highlighted all the stuff in this yellow, and I can't I can't see yellow in this light. <laughs> it's it like show up. oh, that's sad. <laughs> I thought, well, I'll just, I'll light. just, <laughs> it's okay. All right. <laughs> like, where did it go? I can kind of see a little bit. Um, a few things, just a few, um, you know, John's been teaching on being filled with the Spirit, being led by the Spirit of God. Oh, so powerful. And we went over a lot of the scriptures on Monday. <laughs> but to be led by the Spirit. You remember, there's no... There's the Father communicates with the Holy Spirit, and nothing can hinder his communication with the Spirit inside of you because it's the Father and the Spirit, and that Spirit lives inside of you. And then he talks to your Spirit and shows you things to come and teaches you all things and tells you what the Father is speaking to him. That's powerful. And, you know, I'm going to talk tonight about... You know, what, I, I go back to this a lot. Take only his thoughts. Take, what are you taking? What are you taking into yourself? What are you taking into your mind? What are you taking? Because you're taking something, right? It's what you're listening to. It's what you're thinking on. You're taking it when you think on it and you dwell on it and you receive it. And then you think on it more. And I feel like one of the biggest reasons people aren't led by the Spirit because they have, they're taking the wrong thoughts. It's also one of the biggest reasons why Christians get offended, why Christians get, um, they don't walk in love, why, why they get prideful, because they're taking the wrong thoughts. Mm -hmm. They're listening to the wrong influences. And if and also this is the battleground. So true spiritual warfare it starts right here. Because you you know it's not about going and yelling at the devil. It's about taking your thoughts captive and not allowing those thoughts to penetrate in. I heard Keith Moore uh, when he was te teaching once and it was so good. I'm going way ahead of myself because I haven't even read the scripture yet. I'm going to read the scripture first. <laughs> yeah, let's go right away to Philippians. Um, I'm going to start with Philippians 1 9. This will be a. Let's just turn to Philippians. And then we'll figure out where we're going from there. Philippians 1, I think we'll start with. I'm just going to say that one little prayer um, in Philippians 1. And then a lot of scripture tonight, which is awesome. But won't be able to get to it all. It's a good problem to have, isn't it? I can't find Philippians. Come on, where'd you go, Philippians? <laughs> I'm just going past it every time. Philippians, there it is. Okay. Philippians 1, which says, I'm so hot. <laughs> Philippians 1, 9 says, and this I pray. I pray this for you, and I pray this for all of us, that our love, Kevin, I listened to your message on love, and that was so good. Mm -hmm. Your message is really good. And I've always loved this prayer, that your love will abound more and more in knowledge and in depth of insight. Mm -hmm. This version says, in knowledge and all discernment, um, that you may approve the things that are excellent, that you may be sincere that you may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ, being filled with the fruit of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ to the glory of the Lord, Lord Jesus. And in the Passion Version, because that wasn't my version, I memorized it in, so I kind of got, I said it in two different versions just there. Um, Passion Version is really good on this one. It says... I continue to pray for your love to grow and increase beyond measure, bringing you into the rich revelation of spiritual insight in all things. This will enable you to choose the most excellent way of all, becoming pure and without offense until the unveiling of Christ. And the other versions say until the day of Christ. Mm -hmm. And you will be filled completely with the fruits of righteousness that are found in Jesus, 
the anointed one, bringing great praise and glory to God. I love this prayer. Our love abounding more and more in knowledge and depth of insight and discernment, discerning what is best and so we'll be pure and blameless. And that only happens by knowing the word and having intimate relationship with the Lord. To have spiritual insight, right? And, and it says to becoming pure and without offense until the day of Christ, filled completely with the fruits of righteousness. That's powerful, isn't it? Completely. Now, we don't have to work up the fruits of righteousness. It's in us, right? It's fruit of the Spirit. So when you're, when as John's been talking, being led by the Spirit, you're full of the fruit of the Spirit. When you're, when you're intimate, I said on a, a quote on Monday that um, so much we try so often to, just by pure discipline, to get close to the Lord and to, you know, uh, become more righteous and whatever, instead of just by yielding to what the Word says, instead of us by focusing on what the Lord says. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes that discipline is just getting in the Word mm -hmm. and listening. And He might say, I want you to rest. But we listen and we do. And we discipline ourselves to do, even though we want to go and run a marathon. And He says, sit at my feet. We want to go and save the world. And he says, no. You know, go wait in Jerusalem until you get filled with power. Because they were ready to go, I'm sure, once he came alive and they saw it was him. Amen. Um, but we have to yield. And when Jesus said all authority in Matthew 28 has been given, um, that means we need to yield he says to go, right? So we have to yield to his mission. That's that our submission or our commission, our co-mission, right? We're to yield to his mission for us. And we need to be freely yielded to God, fully yielded and freely. Amen. So a couple other points about that is, you know, the reason I want to talk about what we're putting in is because if we live overly conscious of the world around us, what's going on, all the news, all of this, um, oh, this is so good. If we're overly conscious of the world around us, we'll imagine an enemy that's not even there. Yep, that's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can you say that again? If we live overly conscious of the world around us, we will imagine an enemy that is not there. And then we're giving them place. And you find this in a lot of Christian circles. They're, they're listening to the, the ungodly counsel, to this and to that. And they become depressed and discouraged. And that's self-inflicted. But you see it in the world where they're just so overly concerned about everything that's happening. They're losing their focus on what God is doing and how great our God is. Mm -hmm. Amen. He's so much bigger than what's happening. Mm -hmm. And if you're overly focused, all of a sudden you're glorifying the devil. That's what we do. Yep. Do you see what the devil did here? Do you see what he's doing here? Do you see what's happening here and here and what the devil, we don't necessarily say the devil, but we're talking about his works. Mm -hmm. This is what he is causing people to do. And we're focusing on it and focusing on that. It's like saying, look how powerful the devil is. And oh no, there's, there's COVID-19. Oh no, look how powerful that COVID-19 is. And everything is above the power of God in your life and the word of God in your life and the promises of God in your life. Mm -hmm. And it's of our own making. We can imagine and produce an enemy in our own lives because of our thought life that we've allowed in. Yes, the, de the devil or his demons. I mean, it's not like the devil is everywhere, right? We've talked about this before and he doesn't have as many demons as there are angels and he doesn't reproduce demons. So, you know, they're not. We have a lot of angels, a lot more angels. We have a much more powerful God and much more powerful angels, amen? But it's here that we allow these things to come in, in our lives. That's that personal responsibility again. We need to guard our hearts. We need to guard our thinking, amen? And this all goes along with being led by the Spirit because if you are, if you are listening to all this, you're not going to hear the Spirit. 
you're not going to be led. You're not giving place to him. You're giving place to all the other stuff. You're giving place to darkness. Um, let me just see if I can find some of these other highlights I want to... The other thing is, and we shared this, this is um, whatever you give place to in your life, you'll impart to others. Because we were talking about Peter when he was his shadow. He was so full of the spirit when he walked. This was a greater work than Jesus. Right? He says you'll do greater works. When he walked, nobody had to touch him. His shadow, they were healed. He was so full of the spirit, overshadowed by the spirit, mm -hmm. that that shadow, overshadowing, healed people. Just like being under the shadow of the Almighty. That's so powerful, isn't it? But if you're overshadowed by darkness and fear and worry and, oh, what's going to happen? The world's coming to an end and God is not big enough to, to fix this country. And there's no way Trump can win in this election. And the, the, you know what's going to happen then, you know? <laughs> I'm saying that's not right. He is. He is winning. Well, and it's happening, but they don't say that on the news. Um, <laughs> They don't say what's truly happening, right. how the ex exposing of evil is coming out. It's so exciting. Mm -hmm. But Christians are talking the other. Yeah. So many, the fear and the... And so mm -hmm. that shadow on you is going to touch others instead of the Holy Spirit upon you that when you walk, you impact. When Jesus walked anywhere, he changed the atmosphere. People ran, Jesus is coming, Jesus is coming, take your sick, bring him. They had faith. They wanted to touch him, they wanted to hear him. He had the words of life, like the woman at the well, Where, or like the apostles. Where would I go? Right? Where would we go? We're not going to leave you. You have the word of life. Mm -hmm. And that woman at the well, you know, give me some of this living water so I won't die. You know, you've told me everything I've ever done. There was an impartation. There, there was an atmospheric change with that woman just from talking to Jesus. And that's the way it should be with us. Even if we don't say a word, the presence of the Lord in our lives should impact others when we walk in. And so um, let's go over to Philippians. Uh -uh. <laughs> um, we're going to do Philippians 4. 4. You know, when you when, I, when we talk about the Holy Spirit in us, the the way we stay in the presence of the Holy Spirit at all times is to be aware that He's always with you. You mm -hmm. need we need to be aware. We need to be thinking and talking to Him and thanking Him that He's with us. And like I said on Sunday, take that moment and say, Holy Spirit, thank you that you're with me and you're upon me and you're within me. And be aware at all times that everywhere you go, the presence of God is in you and around you. And that peace, like Jesus said, when you go into a, a place, give them your peace. And if they don't receive it, take it back. <laughs> well, that's the Holy Spirit. You know, he'll go and rest on people. If they're, you know, when you walk into a room, if they're willing to receive it. And you know what? We were talking today that... The Holy Spirit knows sometimes we have this love for a person and we're and then the Lord gives us an opportunity to share with them and then they get saved. It's because the whole, the Lord was drawing that person and then he gave you a special love, that's what I feel. Special love for that person to and the words to say. Mm -hmm. Because he, he already knew that he saw that person and he was drawing him because they had a soft heart. Or they they needed the healing, we all do, but they were ready. You know, there's people that are ready for you to share, and there's others that are closed at the moment. Mm -hmm. Amen? So Philippians 4. I'm going to read this one in New King James first. Okay. We all know this. 4.4 4. <clears throat> says, Therefore, my beloved, 4.4, four, where am I? Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Think about that. When you walk in a room, the Lord is at hand. Not like Jesus said, the kingdom of God has come near you. The kingdom of God is at hand. When you walk into the room, the Lord is at hand. We are, 
We're ambassadors of Christ. We are his kids. Right. We, when we walk into a room, it's as if Jesus did because mm -hmm. he's inside of us. And that's not blasphemy. That's who God's made us to be, full of his spirit. We are vessels of the Holy Spirit. We are the tents that he lives in. Amen. Um, the Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Let me see what it says in the Passion, because it's good there, too. And then I'll continue. Be cheerful with joyous celebration in every season of life. Let joy overflow, for you are united with the anointed one. Just remember that. We are united with the anointed one. Let gentleness, gentleness be seen in every relationship, for a Lord is ever near. That gentleness, that meekness, <clears throat> think about that. Have you ever known people that are trying to, you know, hit you over the head with the Bible and try to, in anger, share the gospel as mm -hmm. if, you know, you're going to go to hell if you don't listen. That's not gentleness. <laughs> We've all experienced that, I'm sure. The Lord is very near. Don't be pulled in different directions or worried about a thing. Be saturated in prayer throughout each day, offering your faith-filled request before God with overflowing <clears throat> gratitude. Okay, again, don't cast all your, don't worry. Don't think on these things. Um, then God's wonderful peace, as you talk to him, then God's wonderful peace that transcends human understanding will make the answers known to you. There we are right there. When you spend time with the Lord and you talk to him and you cast your cares and your worries, God's wonderful peace that you cannot even understand will fill you and make the answers known to you through Jesus Christ, the anointed one. So keep your thoughts continually fixed on all that is authentic and real and honorable and admirable, beautiful and respectful, pure and holy, merciful and kind. <coughs> And fasten your thoughts on every glorious work of God. It's so powerful. So, whatever is true, I like the way it says it in here. Finally, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there's any virtue and if there's anything worthy of praise, meditate on these things. Amen. Now, there's the list. That's what we were, I was going to talk about, the list. God gave us a list on what to think on. We've talked about this many times. He gave us the list. So this is what I heard Keith Moore say that time. He said, you should have it should be like a bouncer at your, at your door, mm -hmm. right, of your <clears throat> mind. Mm -hmm. And someone knocks on the door, and you open that little keyhole, and, they, and then you say, the little opening, uh, who are you? Uh, I'm a bad report. Oh, you're not on the list. You can't come in. You know, and you right. slap that vain imagination down. You slap it down. You knock it down. Knock on the door. Who are you? I'm ugly. No, you no no. You're not lovely. You can't come in, right? right. Um, you've got to take your thoughts captive. We're going to go to that scripture next, and that's how you do it. You can't let. A non-truth, the lies, you can't listen to ungodly counsel, you can't listen to things, you can't let it in. And when we do, um, I think it's in the next scripture, you are fellowshipping with those things. Think about that. Mm -hmm. Because it says how um, the scripture I was going to read next is in a, in a little bit is, Ephesians, where it says, have no fellowship with darkness. Yeah. We are children of light. We are right. light. Have no fellowship with darkness. So in our mind, if we allow dark thoughts, lies of the enemy, fear, bad reports, um, ugliness, uh, ba uh, people talking bad about another, um, things that are not honorable or pure, lovely, good report, virtuous, worthy of praise. If we're thinking of things that are not that, we are fellowshipping with lies, with darkness, with bad reports, with things that don't, they're not praiseworthy, that are not pure. That to me says, 
<laughs> we need this is really important for us this is this is the battleground that people lose on because they don't do it mm -hmm. yep. they they'll lose their healing they'll lose their peace they'll get offended they'll leave a church they'll cause division they'll this and that because they're not doing the most important thing which is focusing and guarding your heart and thinking on what Jesus told us to think on. That's right. And whatever is true is the word of God. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the word, the word, the word. Put the word and put the word and put the truth in all the time and think on it. It's pure. It's lovely. It's a good report. It's the best report ever. It's the good news. Mm -hmm. That's what this church, we teach, get in the word and keep getting in the word and believe it, receive it, speak it, don't think opposite. And if someone, so of course, 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 5 says, um, be, uh, though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. We all know the scripture. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but they're divinely powerful for the demolishing and destruction of fortresses. I'm going to read that in the Passions. I don't know. If, um, and we tear down every lofty thing raised up against the knowledge of God, right? I didn't finish it, but I'm going to read it over here because that's what I want to do. All right. Uh, the last part of nine, no, three, four, whatever it is, of four, no, of two, says, mis um, daring to confront those who mistakenly believe that we are living by the standards of the world. So he's talking about um, not forcing, he's saying, don't force me to be hard on you, to be, you know, have to come here and here and lecture you and stuff, right, basically. Um I'm willing to do it by daring to confront those who mistakenly believe that we are living by the standards of the world, not by the Spirit's wisdom and power. That's what the world and some Christians are doing. They're mistakenly believing that they're living by the standards of the world, and they're not believing or living by the Spirit's wisdom and power. For although we live in the natural realm, we don't wage a military campaign employing human weapons using manipulation to achieve our aims. Instead, our spiritual weaponry are energized with divine power to effectively dismantle the defenses behind which people hide. We can demolish every deceptive fantasy that oppresses God and break through every arrogant attitude that is raised up in defiance of the true knowledge of God. Now, this is talking about in our own minds. We have to demolish these deceptive fantasies that oppose God. We have to break through arrogant attitudes, break through that pride, which is the main fall of man, isn't it? This pride we we're talking about today. Um, it's the, every arrogant attitude that is raised up against the true knowledge of God. So we have to start with ourselves first, right? We have to cast those things down. We pray for others to be able to do it, but they still have to do it. They have to cast down those vain imaginations and the things that stand up, rise up against the knowledge of God. So anything that is not in this list is against the knowledge of God, right? Mm -hmm. Because if it's not true, then it's totally against the knowledge of God, right? Uh, we capture, like prisoners of war, every thought and insist that it bow in obedience to the anointed one. So you insist, you insist that your thoughts bow in obedience to the anointed one. That is being led by the Spirit. Uh, you know, if you would do this, you're, you're listening to the right voices. You're listening to the voice of the Spirit. You're saying, no, that's not right. That's not the voice of the Spirit because it's contrary to the Word. And you begin to recognize so easily when you practice this, the difference between the voice of the flesh or, you know, <clears throat> these arrogant attitudes divide, like we say, the word of God divides soul and spirit, joints and marrow, and discerns the thoughts and the attitudes of the heart, right? Hebrews 4.12. Um, so we insist, we capture like prisoners of war, every thought and insist that it bow in obedience to the anointed one. Since we are armed with such dynamic weaponry, we stand ready to punish any trace of rebellion as soon as you choose complete obedience good now we are we are demolishing 
We're armed with such dynamic weaponry. We stand ready to punish in our own lives any rebellion. There's a rebellious thought trying to come through. You immediately say, no, no, no rebellion against the Lord here or against what the word says. A thought, someone says something, you immediately know to say, no, no, not my thought. I don't take that thought. I won't dwell on that thought. And I forgive the person that said that thought. I mean, because sometimes we get people say things and it goes, Shoo. and we have to forgive and we have to cast down that thought because it wasn't true. Mm -hmm. Wasn't true, right? <clears throat> amen, amen. Let's turn to Ephesians 5 real quick. <clears throat> I love all these. You know, it's really, there's so much good word. Amen. Mm -hmm. Just remember your identity is not what Jesus does through you, but is all in your relationship with and through your encounter with God. That's your identity. Not what what how the Lord uses you, what great things you've done for the Lord, but your identity is in your time with him, your intimacy with him, your him, your encounter with God. That's who you are. That's how you know your identity. You know your identity through what the word says about you and the promises he says, how he says he loves you. That's your identity. It's that encounter with God that shows you your true identity. Amen. Mm -hmm. All right, Ephesians 5. And then we'll try to wrap, we'll begin to wrap it up <laughs> right now. I'm going to do one real quick. Therefore, be imitators of God as dear children. And two, and walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling aroma. All right, so we're imitate God, amen, as beloved children. I love that because children will mimic everything you do when they're little to learn. You'll see them doing the same things. And even as adults, I see them that they learn those things from me. <laughs> I can see them with certain things they do, you know, it's really cute. Cute to them. Oh, adults. <laughs> um, and then verse 6. Let no one deceive you. I'm just quoting this one part of it. With empty words. Don't be deceived by empty words. And we sit there and think, oh, I'm, I'm, I won't be deceived. I know the truth. Well, when you're listening to things that are not according to the word, you're listening to empty words. And then you start to speak them. If you keep dwelling on things, you'll speak them too. Then you're being deceived. You're starting to be fearful of something. That's deception. You're trusting in what the world says, how to protect yourself more than what the word says. Amen. Mm -hmm. All right, verse 8. Through, I don't think I'll read it all, but for you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. So our identity is light. Isn't that awesome? Look, think of yourselves as this amazing beacon everywhere you go of light. Because that's who you are. That's your identity. You are light in this world. I like that number nine, too. Yeah, I'm continuing. You're right. Yeah. That, uh, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, that one, mm -hmm. and righteousness and truth. All right? So that's our fruit we bear. Mm -hmm. Finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. And this is a part I was talking about. Verse 11, you have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. Amen. So we're not going to dwell and think and believe and fellowship with those unfruitful works of darkness. Mm -hmm. We are light. Amen. We're light. We don't fellowship. So in your thinking, don't fellowship with wrong thinking. For it's shameful even to speak of those things which were done in secret. Verse 13, but all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light, for whatever makes manifest is light. And I love that because when you walk in a room, your light exposes the darkness. Mm -hmm. People might act up, demons might squeal, or people might, you know, act, act up because there's a demonic influence on them. They don't like you. Mm -hmm. They might say mean things. They might not, they might just you know, be mean. Yeah. But those things are exposed and made manifest by the light. I love that. Just think about that, who, who you are, amen? 
And then, see that you walk circumspectly, verse 15. Not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And later, further on, it just says, but be filled with the Spirit. Amen. To recognize who we are, our identity as light, and that we are full of the very power of God, and that when we go in a room, we expose the darkness. That's why this, you see what's going on in the world. Light's rising up. Darkness is getting darker. Light's rising up, and you see this, this exposing of that darkness. It's getting very exposed. And like I said, the devil is overplaying his hand. All the people that are seeing now, wait a minute, that's really ugly. I might not be a believer, but I can recognize that that is not right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go along with that. I'm gonna run the other way. And oh, there's light over there. I'm gonna run toward the light. Mm -hmm. I like this person. I'm gonna ask what they're doing. How come they're not fearful? How come they're not this and that? How come they're so joyful? Exposes it, and then they'll run to the light. That's why there's gonna be an amazing turnaround. Because that's what's going to happen. And we're going to end with Proverbs 4. I'll just read a little bit of it before we close. In the Passion, because it's so beautiful. Proverbs 4. Okay. Fill your thoughts. No, yeah, we'll start there. 421. Yeah. Fill your thoughts with my words until they penetrate deep into your spirit. Fill your thoughts with his words till they penetrate deep into your heart and your spirit. That's what we have to do, people, in the times like this. You don't keep listening to the news and all the stuff and listening to the people in the frenzy. You double up on your word. Right. You triple up on your word. You meditate on your word. Pay attention to all that I have to say. Uh, let's see. All right, that's... Then, as you unwrap my words, that's like opening a present. Every time you read the word, there's more, there's another treasure you find. Amen? Then as you unwrap my words, they will impart true life and radiant health into the very core of your being. That's how we stay healthy in these times. Amen? They impart life and health. So above all, guard the affections of your heart. What you what you give your attention to, your affections will follow. So start giving your attention to the Word of God. All of us, even more in these times, amen, and encourage others, for they affect all that you are. Mm -hmm. Pay attention to the welfare of your innermost being, for from them flows the wellspring of life. Amen. Mm -hmm. And then set your gaze on the path, verse 25, before you. With fixed purpose, looking straight ahead, ignore life's distractions. That's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> ignore them. Say, no, I, you're not that. welcome here. No, no, I'm not going to think on that. Ignore the distractions that come in your mind. Starts there. Oh, I, I really should go and do this right now instead of spending time with the Lord. Or I, Oh, I really should. What's that noise out there? Oh, the phone just rang. We're trying to spend time with the Lord, and there's life's distractions yelling at you all the time. So we first have to start to ignore those distractions that try to pull you away from your intimacy with God in any way, any of those thoughts that creep in. Amen? Watch where you're going. Stick to the path of truth, and the road will be safe and smooth before you. Don't allow yourself to be sidetracked for even a moment or take a detour that leads to darkness. Every little thought that's wrong that you receive, that's not lovely and pure and of good report and true, leads you on a detour that can lead to darkness. We've all seen it in people where they get a little thought, and it might not be true. It's, it's an untruth. It's a lie. And then they take it to the next level. Therefore, that person must think this of me. I'm so mad because they said this. And then they take it to the next level. <laughs> I mean, really, yeah. that's how it starts. It starts with not, with taking that little detour of thinking. Keep it on the truth, amen, on the straight path. And, you know, we were talking on, on um, Monday about how it says to uh, 
put your hand to the plow and not to look back. And then I was thinking also where it says, um, take my yoke upon me, upon you, because my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And, you know, we think of putting our hands to the plow and not looking back as working so hard all the time and not looking back. But I just saw it as you put your hand to the plow and the oxen are pulling the plow. And that's the Holy Spirit. That's the Lord. That's everything the Lord has done. It's the Word. And you keep your eyes on the Lord, on the Word, and on the Holy Spirit. You're being led by the Spirit. And keeping your eyes focused so you're not going like this, right? And like this. You will walk on that straight, safe path without effort. Because the plow, the, the, the strong oxen are pulling the plow. Holy Spirit is pulling the plow. Amen? Jesus already made the way. He already did it all for us. But we just have to keep our hand to that plow, keeping our eyes on him. And it's the same thing as my yoke is easy, my burden is light. The oxen are, you know, if we were an oxen, we were yoked with another oxen. We're yoked with Jesus, and his is light, and he's pulling this thing, right? And he's directing us as we are led by him. It's so powerful and so wonderful. But it all begins with how what, what we're doing in here. And that is governed by what we're putting in, right? Mm -hmm. What we're putting in. And I've seen so many times, I know we all have, where people stop reading their words, stop going to church, which is a danger right now because what's going on, right? And people are getting out of the habit of church. And then pretty soon they just start to think differently and talk differently and walk differently. It doesn't take very long. Mm -hmm. It's got to stay plugged into the Word and that intimacy. And the intimacy with the Holy Spirit in His Word is how you walk completely led by Him and empowered and how you change lives because it's not you, it's Him in you. And that light's just being spread everywhere you go. It's powerful. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord, for this word. Thank you for you, who you are, and all you're doing in our lives. Bless each one. And I thank you for each one that's watching online. Oh, Lord, we make a commitment to be more aware of your presence in us, your Holy Spirit upon us and within us, and of our thinking to keep it according to your list, true, lovely, honorable, praiseworthy, a good report, worthy of praise. Thank you, Lord, noble, that we'll keep our thoughts fixed on you. And we just give you praise. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.